So, we've already touched the topic of Dark Souls geographical names in some of my previous videos. For instance, we've discussed some really interesting and sometimes even exciting etymology of such names as Lothric, Courland, Faron, Tharolund, Irithil, Arianis, Mira, etc. However, often these names were discussed within the context of other topics they were related to, but weren't really the main subject. So in this video I'd like to discuss some names that we haven't touched yet plus those names that have been touched so slightly and briefly before that they're probably not that easy to find within the longer videos they've originally appeared in, which also contained lots of other interesting stuff. So, let us begin with the name of the one of the most important places in the Dark Souls story. An Orlando. Even though I've mentioned it in few videos, I guess it deserves to be finally discussed in proper detail here, so I'll take the risk to start the video with it. So, word Anor is actually taken from the Elvish language created by J.R.R. Tolkien's and Means Son. While word Londo seems to be derived from Tolkien's Elvish word Lond meaning haven, harbor and also a narrow passage. Likely coming from the narrow passage meaning later spread on haven, harbor, via intermediate meaning of entrance to harbor, as, for instance word Lond means path, and Londio means path on water derived from Londa. So, an or Londo might actually mean sun haven, haven of the sun. Which is rather fitting for a name of the capital of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight and his pantheon of gods, especially if we recall its location. Alternatively, however, an or Londo might also mean sun path, though I'd say it's kinda less fitting for a city. Yet, at the same time, metaphoric of journey of the chosen undead to succeed Lord Gwyn. I guess, we can also mention other, not Tolkien, possible meanings of Londo as derived from Middle English Lond or Land, so an or Londo would be Sunland which also fits the lore as well, or Celtic Lond for Wild, which wouldn't fit it much. But since the first part of the name is clearly a Tolkien's Elvish word, I guess the second part should be considered from the point of view of the same Elvish language in the first place. And name New Londo is obviously derived from an or Londo. But, I guess, what's really intriguing is a rather similar name mentioned in Dark Souls 3, Lundor. Knowing its relation to Kassan recalling the Dark Wraiths of New Londo, seduced by the Dark Stalker, I guess it's natural that the first thought we get is that Lundor is derived from New Londo, by simply adding R to the end. And it wouldn't be really a surprise I guess, it seems that many ages have already passed, so such transformations would be rather natural. However, if we stick to Tolkien's Elvish, and since the name is really similar to Lundo I guess we should do it first, the word door is actually a separate word meaning land, region, dwelling place, and the door ending can be compared to real life English ending land. For instance, like in Mordor, dark, black land, or in Gondor, Gond plus door, stone land. So Lundor might be derived from Londor, Havenland or land of path. However, it can also be derived from combination of Lan and Dor, where element Lan is also a Tolkien Elvish word meaning deep pool or river. In such case, the name Lundor would mean land of deep pool, land of rivers. And once again recalling the Dark Stalker Cass I'd say we can speculate that deep pool is a little reminiscent of the Abyss, though it's an enormous speculation indeed. As for the possible real life roots, Dor might actually have lots of intriguing possible meanings in different languages, as Dutch dry, liquidless, which kinda reminds us of the hollows. Lundor is strongly associated with, though it could as well be a mere coincidence, or, as derived from Proto-Germanic Dura, gate, big door, or possibly derived from Latin dollar, pain, anguish, grief, sorrow, so, theoretically, such meanings could have been combined with Middle English Lond for land, though I'd say it would be a little weird, as element land is usually placed at the end of the name, though who knows? But let's now proceed to the next subject. In Dark Souls 1 we also encountered the name Berenik, which either was a name of land, or, possibly, a name of chivalric order, or something along these lines. This name is associated with heavy knights clad in steel armor, who are told to have been of the mightiest. Until many of them turned undead and ventured to Lordran where they ultimately turned hollow. 
Their appearance reminds us of Roman legionaries, with those shields, helmets, great swords that seem to be the mix of guts of Berserk Golden Age period sword and Roman gladius. At the same time, their appearance is also somewhat similar to Demon's Souls, twin fangs of Bullet Area, due to the Bulletarian royal armor worn by the duo, which is quite similar to the steel set of Dark Souls. But let's return to the main topic of the video, etymology. So, well, I guess it's not a secret that Berenike, or Berenus, is actually a real-life historical name, the name an ancient Greek colony of Sparides received after it was relocated to the place of the modern Libyan Benghazi city center, or, the name of another Greek colony, Port of Berenice Troglodytica, located on the Red Sea coast of modern-day Arab Republic of Egypt. And since that name had been used both by Greeks and Romans, together with Dark Souls Berenike Knight's legionary-like appearance, it leads us to the theory that the name for Dark Souls Land, Region, or Order of the Knights, Berenike simply comes from the historical Berenus, as a reference to it. However, this name actually has Greek roots, not Roman, and, well, the ancient Greek colony in Africa isn't really the first what comes to mind when talking about legionaries. Though, I believe that it is the meaning of the name Berenike, or Berenus, also the name of the Queen of Ptolemaic Dynasty, the Hesperides colony was renamed after, itself is the reason it was picked as a name for the Berenike Knights. As Berenike, or Phrenike, is actually derived from words pharaoh, to bear, to carry, to bring and Nike, victory, as in the name of the goddess of victory, and actually means bearer of victory or bringer of victory. So Berenike knights are actually victory bearing knights, or knights the victory bringers which is rather fitting for heavy armor knights who once were called the mightiest of the mighty and were famed throughout the lands. And, as we've mentioned Berenike knights, Let's also discuss a land of knights who met a rather similar fate as Berenike ones. Ancient Kingdom of Balder, that was ruined by an outbreak of undead plague. We know that its knights, branded by the undead curse were once led by the legendary knight King Rendell, whose name we discussed in the second episode of the Behind the Souls Names series, in an attempt to reach an Orlando. But as we can see, failed and turned hollow themselves. We find many of Balder Knights throughout Lordran, up to the Sense Fortress, where most of them, if not all, were likely defeated and, or hollowed. Except, maybe of one, whom we actually find in Anor Londo, serving as a Dark Moon Blade, along with someone who might be a Berenike Knight though it could also be anyone else wearing the Balder and Berenike steel armor respectively. And the name Balder is actually a real-life name, its alternative forms are Baldur or Bald, as the name of Norse god of light and purity, derived from the adjective bald meaning brave, bold. Actually, English word bold seems to be derived from the very same Proto-Germanic root Balth as, strong, bold as the Norse bald, Baldur is. So, Balder Knights actually means brave, bold knights which is a rather good name for knights in the kingdom led by a knight king. Alternatively, Balder might be also formed from the elements derived from Balth as, Bald, with meanings of Lord, Prince or Hero, which, however, are probably a little less fitting for this land's name, as it's not Lordran. And, when speaking about Dark Souls lands known by their knights, we should certainly discuss the realm of Astora, as it is the homeland for quite many of those few friendly characters who actually help us throughout the game. Even in Dark Souls 3, where we find out that Astora is now lost. There is a friendly Astorian knight who helps us in our journey. Aside of the reference to Sir Oscar of Dark Souls 1, which is also rather helpful alone. Providing us with the Ashen Estus Flask. Well, Astora really is the homeland for lots of interesting characters, each of whom gives a topic to discuss in their own right. But, 
Not to make this video too long and to stick to the main topic, I'll get straight to the etymology part, leaving those other topics for other videos. So, I believe we can pick two main theories regarding the name as Torah. And I'll start with one, that I deem to be a less likely one, though, still rather possible. The thing is that word as Torah also sounds as the Japanese pronunciation of Greek word astra, star, and actually the original text of the game is in Japanese, while English version is only translated from it. So, as Torah could actually mean star. A really beautiful name for a land, if only doesn't really seem to make much sense aside of that. But, who knows, Solaire of Astora seems to make some sense as Solaire of the star, like Sun is also a star, right? Or, maybe, could it be something about Astral World? What do you think about that? Well, there's also another point that might explain the possible star name of Astora, though, I must admit it myself, it's rather far-fetched, yet peculiar. Once again appealing to Tolkien's languages. We may recall that the original name the race of elves received from Valor, Armio, Elder, literally means people of the stars. So, maybe, Astorians are compared to Tolkien's elves, who, among living creatures, resemble Gain or gods and spirits the most, being people of the stars and maybe the most similar to gods of Anor Lundo among the men. For, as we know, Andre of Astoria was once planned to be Gwyn's firstborn, and still retains appearance that is quite similar to Gwyn's. Though I doubt that Astorians really have much in common with the elves, they're humans, after all, and this explanation is terribly far-fetched. So Astra theory still doesn't seem to make too much sense if we take the wild speculations aside. But, Another theory, which I believe is more likely, is that Astora is derived from an Occitan word Astur, which means hawk. Now, where the interesting part begins. I guess we all know how strong our souls games influenced by Kenta Amura's manga Berserk, I guess the devs always admitted it, and numerous references are really obvious, as we discussed in the Berserk references and inspirations series. But before we proceed. I must warn you about the possible Berserk manga spoilers, so if you haven't read it up to the episode 307 I believe, the end of Falcon of the Millennium Empire arc slash beginning of the Fantasio arc, and wouldn't like anything to get revealed too soon, you can skip the video to 1456 or click the annotation. So the thing is that the Japanese word for Falcon, Taka, is also the word for Hawk, and it's the source of grand confusion of Berserk manga translation, as Initially the translators thought that Taka in Takano Dan, the name of Griffith's mercenary band, meant Hawk. Probably because it sounds more warlike comparing to Falcon. However, the later events of the manga revealed that Griffith is the Falcon of Light and his new capital bears the name of Falconia, which kinda makes it logical for his mercenary band to be also called Band of the Falcon, not Band of the Hawk, and his old nickname to be White Falcon Griffith, not the White Hawk. And if we look at the name Falconia we see that its root is obviously Falcon, with suffix ia, which has Greek origins and, among other purposes, is used to form place names, so Falconia sounds to us as a name of a country or a city. But let's recall that the Japanese word for Falcon is the same word as for Hawk, and switching them in Falconia gives us Hawkia, which doesn't really sound well. Unlike Astoria, or Astora as, I guess, Astoria, is more associated with real-life hotels, belonging to Astor family, whose surname seems to be derived from Occitan Astur, Hawk 2. And, as Astur root means Hawk, it is actually possible to replace Falcon root of Falcon ear with it, rather than English word for Hawk, and still get the same word play on switching between the different meanings of Japanese Taka. So name Astora could actually be a really neat reference to Berserk's Falconia, as it would actually mean the same as Falconia would, if we changed its Falcon root into English Hawk, as in Japanese the same word Taku is used for both birds, and Astora is derived from Occitan word Ast which means Hawk. Well, it might sound a little complicated when writing it down, but it's actually quite simple, yet elegant. As for other possible options, Astora could be related to Latin Asta, passive indicative of Asta or Adisto, which means I stand. 
And now, let's discuss another peculiar Dark Souls geographical name, which might actually be another neat reference to Berserk, which, I suppose, only makes previously discussed Berserk theory a little more likely. The following possible meanings were pointed out by one of subscribers of my channel, Vita, who actually studies Germanistics and helped me a lot with the research of name Hordrick. The land of Weinheim, a homeland for sorcery arts and sciences. This name is obviously composed from two elements, Van and Heim. As for element Heim, it is a rather common in Germanic and Nordic languages, and means home, so Weinheim is a pretty natural sounding name for a land. So, Heim is pretty simple, while Van is actually way more interesting and provides us with some peculiar options. The first thought is that it could be an Old Norse element for either wine or meadow, although, it doesn't seem to make much sense, as the name of land famous for its sorcery school. However, as pointed out by Vita, van element of Weinheim can actually be derived from Germanic root van meaning delicate, accurately crafted or nice, beautiful, which can possibly fit Weinheim as a heim, home of sorceries, magic arts, science. However Vita has also suggested that van element could have also been transformed from a Latin root ventus, wind, so Wienheim could actually be an alternative form of Windheim, or Windham, as element Ham in fact has the same meaning as Heim, home and has the same origins. And we can recall that Windham is the name of capital of Midland Kingdom in Kentromira's Mango Berserk. Already knowing how many things in Dark Souls are related to Berserk, we can assume that Wienheim is in fact another Berserk inspired name. Windham written down using alternative forms of its elements, Wind, Van and Ham. Heim. Quite interesting, isn't it? Also, another peculiar moment, but another possible berserk spoiler, so use an annotation or manually skip to 1744 if you like, though it's a really interesting one. The city of Falconia, which we discussed earlier, is actually located at the same place Wyndham used to be located at. So we can see there might be a certain rule regarding the names of Astora and Weinheim, as created in rather similar manner of switching the elements of the name into different, yet related ones, from the names of cities which were located at the same spot, almost too exciting, isn't it? Though it's only a speculation, of course, but still an interesting one. And, let us now proceed to the next subject. The ancient land of Zena, whose people are famous for their admiration of wisdom and glory, I guess we can state that this land is associated with explorers, adventurers and traders. As pretty much the only character who is explicitly stated to be from Zeno is Domnall, ruler of the world. A trader, who appears in unusual places and provides us with some rare, often even unique, items. Domnall also wears the unusual adventurer's set, also associated with Zena, I believe, which symbolizes wisdom, glory, exploration, and these are not mere symbols for boasting, as he indeed possesses some important knowledge. He shares with us if we buy enough of his goods. You see kindling in the catacombs. Use divine weapons. That will repel the reassembly. Which skeleton. are apparently acquired from unusual, dangerous places. And, having all of this said, I guess we can tell that Zena is a rather fitting name for such a land. As Zeno is actually the real-life Genoa's and Ligurian name of Genoa. A powerful medieval and Renaissance Italian city-state and republic along with Venice, Pisa, Amalfi, that gathered its might and wealth through trade, shipbuilding, and banking. So in those days, real-life Genoa, or Zena, could indeed be called a home of traders, adventurers and explorers. No wonder, that a successful trading center, where one could find all sorts of unusual foreign goods, eventually became a cultural center, becoming home for many prominent Renaissance artists of its era. And looking at Domnall of Dark Souls, we can imagine that his fictional homeland of Zena is actually something rather similar to historical Genoa, can't we? Though, from another point of view, name Zena might also be derived from Xena, like the name of the warrior princess, as the game's text is originally in Japanese, and the names are written down in Japanese so that their pronunciation would be close to the original, 
Hence X and Z can be confused in this name. And Xenu is actually derived from the Greek name Xenia, hospitality, which is created from a Greek root, Xenos, foreigner, guest. And, indeed it might also be part of the meaning, though somewhat less likely than Ligurian 1, as foreigner, guest describes Domnal pretty well. Since even in the weird lands of Lordran, such adventurer like him seems rather outlandish. But, the both options fit well, actually, and could even have been picked together as meaning of Dark Souls Land of Xena. And, I guess that would be it for this video. Truth to speak, there are a lot of other interesting name etymologies left that I'd like to discuss with you in this video, but at the same time, I wouldn't like to make this video too long, so no subject gets lost among others, and to stick to a certain concept, so it would also be easy to watch. So, even though it kinda hurts me, I guess I should force myself to end this video at this point. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was interesting for you and wasn't too difficult to watch. Also, check out other etymology, lore or cosplay videos on my channel if you like.